Are you ready? Am I going to drop a camera too? I got to take those questions. For questions. Coach, how, uh, how much of a blow is it for the end engine? It, it, obviously, you know, uh, not the greatest news. Uh, but, you know, at this time, what you do is you look at it on a personal level. Just heartbroken for the kid, you know. Um, you know, the guy's worked his, his tail off. And uh, he's exactly what college athletics is supposed to be about. He's exactly what the University of South Florida wants from its athletes. And obviously, he's, he's exactly what I want to be around every day in this coaching profession. And so when you see a kid that's, you know, uh, going through what he's going through the last couple of days, it's it's hard. It's hard. Um, it's the hardest thing to go through as a player and as a coach that cares deeply about his, his individual players. It's it's difficult as a coach. There's no doubt about it. You know, we talk all the time in terms of our program. You know, in terms of turning setbacks into setups for something greater. And it's easy to talk about it. It's easy to talk about, you know, uh, when unfairness happens, how do you respond to it uh, with resolve and resiliency and being able to fight through adversity. And it, it's an important part of our program. But I'm here to tell you it's a lot easier to talk about it in the team meeting than to go through it. So um, the, the He'll have a great surgery at the end of this week. Uh, he'll fully recover, and from all indication, he'll come back even stronger and better than before. So it's just a, it's a it's hard for the, for, for a guy who cares about his kids, but more importantly, it's hard for for Lex and his teammates to see because everybody knows who he is and what he's all about. Was this knee the same leg that he had an injury? Late last season, uh, no, uh, with the hamstring that he hurt against uh, Memphis yeah. when he got taken out, who I I can't remember what leg that was to be honest with you. Um, it's a obviously a more severe injury than anything that he's had in the past. Obviously, what happened? Just kind of twisted it, making a spin pass. Didn't, there was maybe a little bit of contact from the defender, but it wasn't like taken out or anything like that. So just one of those normal type basketball plays. At the so, moment, nobody thought it was what it was? Or? No, no, he, 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 he heard it. Okay. He heard it. We got him right in there and uh, saw the doc, did the MRI. Right then. You mentioned being loved by his teammates. What is their response to him? I'm sure it's been difficult. Well, you, you, you know, obviously, anytime one of your brothers goes down, it, you, you know, it, it's a gut punch, you know. Um, you know, and, and we got a tough group of guys, but at the same time, you can be the toughest guy in the world, and that's going to impact you. You know, it's going to impact you. To be clear, this had nothing to do with him being held out of the game on Tuesday, correct? No, it's a different injury. You know, uh, same knee, but a different injury to it. So, um, and we were being, you know, obviously very precautious on his way back. And unfortunately, the incident happened Friday afternoon. Just for for accuracy's sake, torn ACL. Is that what no, I'm not gonna. It, it, that's illegal for me to tell you. So from a lineup standpoint, I think we're looking at one freshman back and played four. I mean, what, what, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, we, we, you got to make some adjustments. You know what I mean? Um, and we're going to have to probably experiment a little bit because, you know, what a difficult part of coaching is when you plan, 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 plan. And that's also one of the challenges in building a program uh, is you can plan all you want, you know, and it's also, you know, in terms of sustaining one, you know, you, you, there are things out there you cannot control. And then when those things happen, you need to respond the right way. Uh, 
collectively as a staff and collectively as a as a team as well. You know, so um, we still got a lot of pieces intact, and we just need to, you know, it. Obviously, his production is going to be difficult to replace, but we just need everybody to become a better version of themselves. And if we can do that, um, we'll have to be a little different, obviously, but, you know, again, there's some opportunities out there. That's one of the most more obvious ones that Michael Durr is the best version of Michael Durr that he can be? Yeah, you know, and I think he's probably as improved a player as we have in our program. You know, um, he's gained strength, gained confidence. The last 10, 12 games of last year, rebounding-wise, he was as good as anybody around. Averaging 10 rebounds a game during that stretch. Going 18 for 20 from the free throw line during that stretch. Um, but yeah, as a, as a sophomore, he was going to be asked to carry a, a, a much bigger load anyways, and that becomes imperative. In hindsight, is going with that smaller lineup against St. Leo on Tuesday night. I mean, you're going to have to play with that a lot, considerably, correct? Yeah, and, you know, and, and smaller is relative, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, but that's where our toughness has to come into play. That's where, you know, uh, Dawson, Collins, and Rido had, I think, 11 or 12 defensive rebounds in that game. You know, we, we have good rebounding guards. Those guys are going to have to really do a good job of that, which also can help us offensively because that does kind of ignite your break when you're able to get perimeter defensive rebounds. So Zach had four defensive rebounds, which might have been a career lifetime high for him, you know, but that's something that we emphasize and hopefully that will, you know, continue. How good is it to start the season at home with a couple of games right off the bat? Yeah, you know, obviously you, you, you open up a, with with Pine Bluff, two all-league players in their starting lineup uh, in Baynard and, and Doss. Uh, they lost their leading score, but at times uh, they showed their greatest ability offensively in terms of pounding the ball inside. And they're big, they're athletic. Um, you know, I think they're, they're primed to have a, a much better season this year. And then to turn around on Sunday and have a ACC team coming in in Boston College with Jimmy Christian as a, as a coach, a guy who I've known for a long, long time and is one of the most respected coaches in the country. Um, you know, with with um, a dynamic five man that can score in a variety of ways and is a tremendous passer. Uh, and they really challenge you offensively in terms of the different actions that they they run is unique to their system and style. So on our defensive end, we're going to have to really be laser focused in terms of our coverages and different things like that. So um, you know to have the, the 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 two home games this week to kind of tip it off. I think our guys are excited about it. Coach Pine Bluffs are probably going to zone you all game. Yeah. Um, but their zone has some matchup um, elements Principles, to it. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you think you'll be able to run your normal offense, or will it be a lot of zone offense? I, I, I think you got to incorporate a little bit of both. You know, one of the best things we do offensively is able to, to mix some of our man sets in against the zone to get some movement. And I think sometimes if you go stagnant in your zone offense or if you're playing on top of the zone the whole game, you got to be able to mix in some of your movement stuff on, in the man so you're able to get some gap penetration, some post ups, some paint touches. Anytime you play a zone, you want to go under, below, behind the zone. You can't just play on top of it. The other thing that we have to do a good job of is our defense has to create some pace so we can try to attack the zone before it's set. Um, and and you got to make shots. You can run the best zone offense in the world. If you don't make shots, it doesn't matter. You know, um, you know our our thing is against zone paint touches create good shots and get offensive rebounds. Because sometimes zone teams don't do as good a job of blocking out and cutting out because they don't have man responsibilities. So you got to find avenues to get to the offensive glass. So when we face a zone, we have our zone attack, but as you, as you asked, we also mix in some of our man stuff against it. Because they will match up some in that zone. Uh, and it's in, you know, really important that our guards who, you know, have Faced it, we, you know, it's 
all three games against DePaul last year, it was 95% zone, you know. So it would be a good test for us early. I know the news is, the news is tough today, but how do you get your team focused um, for this game tomorrow? Because it's a quick turnaround. You know, you got to rely on your seniors and your upperclassmen, you know. Um, those guys understand that every game is, is important for us. Uh, We've created a non-conference schedule that is challenging and so forth. Um, so I think our guys are excited about that, but it also kind of increases the challenge a little bit for us. So um, when, whenever it comes to being ready to play, uh, you have to rely on your, your leaders and your veteran players in order for that. Again, it's your first game of the year, first time to really put on the uniform where it counts. I think our guys would be ready to go. You've had uh, two guys set up the scrimmage. Uh, Mayan, what's his status going forward? So with, with Mayan, it's a little different with him. So uh, what we're doing with him is we're, we're helping Mayan work through some private personal issues that need to be addressed before we concern ourselves with any basketball competition. Um, he is an active member of our team on a daily basis. But until we enter our next phase with him, or when we do, then I'll let you know. You know what I mean? In terms of that. Um, and that's been the case for a while, uh, moving forward. But at the same time, there's some things that, you know, as I said, kind of private and personal that he needs to take care of. And Jim's a guy that doesn't always get talked about, but it sounds like he may be a little bit more important now. He can step back in that middle zone. And that's what we talked about as a senior, you know, and he was prime. He, he's had it, it's, you know, he won a, one of the awards this summer in terms of uh, work ethic and really putting in the time. He's dramatically improved and much more comfortable out there as well. And he played at the, you know, 15 minute a game mark that he played last year. About half that time was alongside Mike. It wasn't always at the at the five, so um, you know he's a guy that obviously uh, there's a greater opportunity for him, and I think he's as a senior much more confident, much more understanding our system styles defensively and offensively that we're going to have to count on for sure. As as you've rebuilt this the past couple of years, a lot of things have happened. One thing that happened last year was the home court, a lot of success. As you go into this season, do you, do you sense? confidence and responsibility for the guys when they go on that home court to protect it and, and know that they've got something going there? Yeah, I, I think that's one of the marks that we look at in terms of our program development where you, we want to compete no matter where you're at. But it, you, you, just the fact, simple fact is you, you have a little extra juice when you're at home, you know, and, and there's maybe a little more pride in terms of taking care of and protecting your home court. Um, even at times when we weren't as successful in that, I think there was, there was still that sense amongst the players. Um, but you got to dig down a little, a little deeper, and I think that's something that we want to build. We want to build the Yingling Center to be one of the most difficult places to play. And the only way to do that is to have success when you play on that court. Okay, All good? Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Yep. Yeah.